Little Black Dress by S.C. Watkins. It's amazing the things people do when they think nobody's watching. Generally good, normal, everyday people. They do some strange things. And they do some not so strange things. Nose picking, that's always a favorite. Scratching themselves. Not to scratch it, but really digging in there, you know? I always wondered about that one. And those are just run-of-the-mill, everyday things that people do when they think nobody's watching. But I'm watching. My name is Henry. I'm 87 years old, and I'm dying. I've been retired for a number of years, but I used to be a surveillance expert. Now, the cancer has spread, and doctors who know say I've got less than a month. So, I guess it's time. I'm not a writer, so don't expect this to be some perfectly laid out bit of prose. I'm too tired to hire a ghostwriter, and I guess I've always been a do-it-yourself kind of guy anyway. So here goes. I once viewed a series of events that haunt me to this day, and I expect those events to haunt me until the day I die, which isn't too far off now. It all started on a pretty boring night in 1995. I worked for a casino then, sitting in a little office, staring at a row of grainy screens. Four screens were mine to observe. Observe and report. That was my job. And I did the observing part pretty well. The reporting part? Let's just say that if it seemed important, I'd write up a report on it. Only in 1995, on the first night, this didn't seem too important. Until later. But then, I guess I just thought it was a little too late to write up a report. So I just continued to watch. Try to understand that surveillance experts we love to call ourselves experts, are just regular people. And when you sit a regular person down in front of a grainy screen and tell them to just sit there and watch for anything suspicious, well, after seven or eight hours, that guy's eyes might start to play tricks on him. It happened to all of us. That's why we'd constantly call each other over for confirmation. Hey Jim, come here a sec. See that blonde at table 14? Does it look like she has a card up her sleeve? See there, that little piece of white sticking out of her sleeve. Most of the time, it would turn out to be nothing. Go get some coffee, Henry. You're seeing things. After seeing things for a few years, you start to second-guess yourself. And pretty soon, you stop calling everyone over to double-check your own eyes for you. You just start to assume you're seeing things. And you don't write up reports about seeing things. So when an unusually tall gentleman, dressed to the nines in a tuxedo, walked into the men's room just off the casino floor on October 15th, 1995, I didn't write up a report on it. When he failed to come out of the men's room, ever, I just assumed I was seeing things. And I didn't write up a report on that, either. My biggest mistake was failing to write up that report when the same thing happened on November 15th. Same guy. Same tuxedo. Same men's room. He went in. He never came out. I checked with security. The guys in security checked the men's room. No unusually tall gentleman in a tuxedo. The security guys ribbed me about it a little, told me to take a vacation that the job was getting to me. So I smiled. I laughed at the ribbing. But I started watching the door to that men's room like a hawk. Nothing happened until December 15th. I saw him on the casino floor. He was casually walking around the blackjack tables. He had an air about him but nobody seemed to be noticing him, except me. Nobody turned to stare at the unusually tall gentleman in a tuxedo. That seemed strange in and of itself. He moved slowly, 
like a large cat stalking some unseen prey. Well, unseen to everyone but the cat. And then I noticed her. She was beautiful, sexy, wearing a little black dress with a red stripe that ran down each side, showing off her curves. She sat at a table. She was betting the minimum, five dollars. She had four chips left in front of her on the table. She was down to twenty bucks. The tall gentleman circled. He watched her from across the room. He walked slowly around the casino floor, never taking his eyes off her. The dealer flipped his cards. Blackjack. He scooped up everyone's bets, including the sexy woman's, as she stood up, no chips left on the table. The unusually tall gentleman followed her as she walked, swinging her hips seductively across the casino floor. She entered the women's room. He paused for only a moment, then entered the men's room. Now I sat and watched both doors. My eyes flicked back and forth constantly. I barely dared to blink. I sat and watched until tears began running down my cheeks. I had to close my eyes, just for a second, just to wipe the tears, so I could see straight again. Was that when it happened? Was it in that tiny fraction of a second that they both emerged from their respective rooms, gliding swiftly and silently out of the camera's view? I knew that wasn't possible, but neither was the fact that neither the unusually tall man nor the sexy woman ever came out of those bathrooms, ever. I'm sure by now you must think that I'm a crazy old man who's gone a bit senile in his old age. I might have thought the same thing. I watched those screens for another seven years and never saw anything strange again. And like I said, after many years of staring at grainy screens, waiting for something strange to happen, you start to second-guess yourself. I guess I started thinking that maybe I did need a vacation. Hell, maybe I needed to retire. And so, I did. Last year, the old casino I worked in for so long was torn down. Lots of casinos being torn down these days. But you might have seen this one in the news. Remember now? Three skeletons were found in the lower-level women's bathroom. In the wall. The matter is still under investigation, and none of the three women have been identified yet. But I think I might know who one of them is. I don't know her name. I don't know whose child she was, or whether she was a working girl. Some of them were, you know. All I do know is that she was wearing a little black dress, with a red stripe down each side that showed off her curves. <laughs> 